Presence, Lord, is felt so fully today in this place. Yes. Mm. It permeates the walls. It permeates the music. It permeates our hearts. And so I am just knowing today that there is one life that is here, that is everywhere present. In this place, in every place. I'm knowing that this one is love. This one is source. This one is the cause of all that there is. Oh, it is the divine intelligence behind every system and every function. It is the sunrise and the sunset. It is the ebb and flow of the tides. It is the seasons. Oh. And as it is all around, it is also within us. So I know that I am one with it. I know that I am a divine expression of this one, and I know that this is true for everyone in this room, for everyone that is listening, for everyone everywhere, that we are all divine expressions of this one perfect life. And so it is with gratitude that I bless this service today at the East Bay Church of Religious Science. I bless all the volunteers, all those people that have made this service possible from preparing the programs to the audio text to the ushers and the greeters i bless our board of, of our, our board just knowing that they are taking care of the business of this church i bless the ecclesiastical team the practitioners who hold the high watch for reverend anthony that so graciously holds pastoral care and the prison ministry and i bless our senior minister our spiritual leader reverend celeste frazier who will bring the word today who will help us elucidate how to use this creative power for our own good and for the good of all and i bless the music ministry that unfailingly uplifts us and I bless the congregants, all that you are, all of you that are here participating in this service, just knowing that you help us make our mission possible to create a world that works for all. And so I am just grateful, just grateful for the alchemy of love and law. I am grateful to know that the law in perfect action brings these words forward. I know that the service is manifest in perfect perfect order and so I release these words I let them go and I invite you to anchor them with me by saying and so it is, and so it is. let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your good The glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. The glory of your goodness, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
thank you, thank you. And welcome, welcome family. Good morning, good morning. My name is Kimberly Satterfield and I'm a practitioner here. Um, you can identify all the practitioners by our purple stoles. And I just want to say that we are really committed to being of service to you. We have really committed our lives to really recognizing and using the creative power within. And we do that through affirmative prayer. We know that it is very effective. We know that it transforms lives. We know that it heals and reveals. And so we really, really invite you at the end of our service to join us in the prayer room and take advantage of our prayers. We would really, really like to serve you in that way. And so now I would invite everybody to stand and you can find the Declaration of Principles under your chair, and we will say them in unison. This is what we believe. We believe in God, the living Spirit Almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and the necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that heaven is within us and that we experience to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe that the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life, and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth, through our intuitive and spiritual nature, and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in the internal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life we live is, is God. God. And so, and so it, is. it is. Thank you, Kimberly. It's so nice to hear you this morning. You may see that you'll be seeing more of the practitioner core. They are totally in rotation, so you're not just seeing the same people over and over again. You get to see all of the core throughout the year. So my name is Reverend Celeste Frazier. I am, <laughs> I am the spiritual leader here at East Bay. It is my joy to welcome you here this morning. And I want to highlight something in the Declaration of Principles. It says, the manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. And so what we know about God is what shows up in our lives. And so we'll be talking more about that later today. If there's anyone who's here for the very first time, may I invite you to stand now so that we may confer a blessing upon you? Yes, yes. 
and the congregation raises our hands in your direction and we say welcome to East Bay Church of Religious Science we know who you are you are a unique individualization of God you are the beauty you are the intelligence you are the love of God we're so happy that you came by this way today we know that you have many options and we are clear that you are here by divine destiny this day Welcome to East Bay Church of Religious Science. Please take your seats with honor. Well, Cedric, well, other folks, I'm looking for some January birthdays up in here. Tell us your name and if it's comfortable for you to do so. Your age. My name is, whoa. My name is Cedric Long, AKA said number one. I am timeless and 62 years young. Okay. Yes. My birthday was yesterday. Good morning. My name is Vanessa. My birthday is Wednesday, January 30th. All right. And I will be 56. Good morning. My name is Anita Moore Hackney, and my birthday was the 16th, and I was 92. Good morning. My name is Divine Glory, and my birthday is January the 3rd, and I'm 66. Good morning. My name is Pamela. My birthday was January 17th, as well as our beloved practitioner, Hope, and I am 70. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Georgia Eagles. Georgia Eagles, my birthday was January 24th, and I am 75. Good morning, East Bay family. Hi, family in North Carolina who's watching on the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> 
I am a Reverend Yolanda R. Simmons, and my birthday is today, Sunday, January the 27th, and I am 57 years old. Good morning. My name is Wesson, and my birthday will be on January 29, which is Tuesday, and I will be 44 years old. Good morning. I'm Pam Connie. My birthday was January 4th, and I'm 855. Hello. My name is Tandra DeBose, and my birthday was January the 6th, and I'm 58. And as you know, my daughter Jordan is very shy. Her birthday was January the 3rd, and she turned 16. So what I've handed everyone is a free birthday practitioner session. And we are going to ask you to fill them out, either give them to an usher at some point or bring it to the office during the week. And we'll send you a list of available practitioners who will give you your free session. Happy birthday. For the rest of us, I want you to take an opportunity to greet someone that you don't know very well today. We know it's easy to go to our friends that we already know, but go ahead and reach out and touch someone. way back to your seats that would be awesome we know that this is a love community but if you can make your way back to your seat that would be great And as everybody is making their way back to their seats, I will introduce Precious, who is going to give us our community announcements. (laughs) 
Terry. Good morning, East Bay. Good morning. All right. Okay, give everyone a second to get settled. Uh, whoo. Okay. So we're doing things a little differently this morning. Uh, we have so much going on here at East Bay, and though I love speaking from the stage, um, I know it takes up a lot of time. So please make sure to take your bulletins with you. You should be getting our weekly Mind Over Matter newsletter. Those are key pieces and key tools so you'll know what's happening here in your community at East Bay. With that said, I'd like to just highlight um, a few key announcements. Yes, ma'am. And there's something else happening when I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, as you are aware, we have a very active community outreach program and ministry here at East Bay, led by the fearless Ona Afre. The ministry, however, still needs your donations. So your bottled water, food, snacks, blankets, baby wipes, lotion, toiletries, tarps, contractor bags, gift cards, whatever you can share, please do. You all should know Ona very well. If not, you can stop by our SEVA sacred service table and they will have her contact information to share. But as we talk about the oneness and how we all have everything we need, that should mean that we have a little to extend to those who need it the most in our community. With that in mind, East Bay has several opportunities for SEVA or sacred service. There are three immediate and ongoing needs, including office and administrative support on Wednesdays and Thursdays, handy persons for needed electrical, plumbing, painting, carpentry, and general fix-it type of tasks, and our education ministry support. Uh, for our ongoing classes and one-time workshops. In addition to those immediate and ongoing needs, we also need support for our 2019 season of nonviolence, as well as our first Friday's in-house artist exhibition program. To sign up for any of these opportunities, just take a moment and go to the SEVA table, which is always in the fellowship hall, just straight down the long hallway after service. Or if you aren't able to do that, Harriet, if you could please stand. Harriet Johnson, our vice, the vice president of our board of trustees, is also the leader of SEVA, and she will happily take all your information, send you emails, and get you plugged in and ready to go. So we all have something to give. Let's give it back to East Bay. Annual financial statements for 2018 have gone out. You should have received yours by now. If not, please email us at accounting at ebcrs.org and you will receive a response within three business days. Taking a pause. Yes, there's been a little interesting ridiculousness coming out of DC, but we are staying on top of our business regardless of what happens with the IRS. So, <laughs> pause ended. Okay. And finally, are we doing the potluck? No, I just want you to mention why you're talking about business. Ah, yes. Okay. I did notice that. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and continuing our focus on the business, your business, and transparency, we ask and encourage you to take a note of the bottom entry in today's bulletin showing you the income for last year of $495,000, a lot, and our expenses, which awesomely were less than our income. Exactly. It is working, y'all. We are doing some amazing things here at East Bay. You know, a little pat on the shoulder. So speaking of amazing things, I would like to bring some people forward who have done some amazing things in 2018 that manifests itself as beautification in our lovely center, our home. Would the beautification team please come up? Would the bookstore team please come up? 
Would anyone who participated in the renovations in 2018 please come up? Okay, who's here? Come on up. Yes, that includes writing a check. So, acknowledging two people on our beautification team, Harriet Wright, Caitlin Smith, acknowledging uh, Michelle Blakely on the bookstore team helping to beautify that, Tandra coming up also from the bookstore team, Betty Black also from the bookstore team, knowing that Z made a contribution for our fellowship hall floor. I'm not sure what everybody else did, but I'll bring the mic over and you can say what it is if I haven't already mentioned your name. Georgia Eagle, I write the checks. <laughs> it was $200 to the uh, social hall there. All right. Um, I donated plants and the Japanese screen in the prayer room. Yes. Support for the um, bookstore. Store. Bookstore. Brain, too. We worked as a team, Betty and I. <laughs> I'm here and there and everywhere. <laughs> we help beautify the bookstore. I'm working on a bookstore with yes. Olivia. Please give them lots of love. I want to also highlight Caitlin who has done an amazing job with the garden and she did the curtain in the fellowship hall and she continues to care for our prayer room and we're knowing that now the practitioners are taking care of that and they've got their checklist and they're on it and they're owning that space to create something wonderfully loving and supportive for all of us. So thank you everyone. The season for nonviolence begins on January 30th, the anniversary of the assassination of Gandhi, and ends on April 4th, the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Complete the nomination form for local heroes in the Bay and let us know who you believe should be acknowledged for their transformational work. Nomination forms are available in the fellowship hall, in addition to the recognition of heroes, we will be holding a peace vigil at Lake Merritt on Friday, March 22nd from 6 to 7 p.m. Volunteers are needed for our key events, so please be sure to sign up at the Sacred Seva table after service today. Art at East Bay. Join East Bay as we showcase our in-house artists. You all should have a flyer in today's bulletin letting you know that this, I'm sorry, February's featured artist is our own Reverend Dr. Francione. The exhibition opening is Friday, February 1st at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Join us and be inspired. If you would like to become a member of East Bay, you have one more chance to do so before voting eligibility ends. Only members can vote at our annual March meeting, so please bring your completed applications or be prepared to complete them on Sunday, February 3rd at the last membership class for the winter quarter. And finally, we invite you to Healthy Black Aging, Workshops, Information, and Body Movement on Saturday, February 9th at 10 a.m. here at East Bay. For more information, simply reach out to Kwaza Amara. He is the facilitator of our health and wellness ministry. His number is printed in the bulletin. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Precious. And now it is time for our musical inspiration with the East Bay Mass Choir with Rodney and Daryl and Bobby and Vanessa and Lisa. And in advance, thank you so much.
mass love, mass service. Thank you so very much. Vanessa Wynn, Lisa Bayless, Rodney Street, Daryl Thompson, Bobby Eddins. Yes, I walk in the love of God. Mm. I, I spoke to Ricky when I was in L.A. We didn't get to see each other. She called me after I had already landed and said, come on over for lunch. I'm like, I'm back to Oakland now. <laughs> but that's one of those wonderful, wonderful reminders of where we are. Yes. Where we are living, where we are moving, where we are having our being. Walking in the love of God, that's no joke, Amen. Right? I mean, feel what that feels like. That's like there's no way that you're going to be outside of the love of God no matter where you go. I don't care what kind of neighborhood it is. Okay? You're walking in the love of God. That's, that's one thing that I know. Emma Curtis Hopkins helped me to know that in a real way when I was, when I was studying her scientific Christian mental practice and I, I came to know that there is nothing that anybody could do that could ever harm me or ever destroy me. Interesting how I forget that sometimes. But there is a power. There's a presence. And wow, it's that power. It's like all power. Right? And it's right here. It's right at our fingertips. Right? There's a presence. And it's not way out there somewhere. It's right here. And I get to activate it anytime I want. Just like when, when Kimberly was doing the meditation, she was like, breathe in the, the love of God, the breath of God. Right? And, and offer this breath to life. This this reciprocity is what's really going on. The rest of it is cray cray. You know? Seriously though. I'm going to talk more about that though. But, but get that. Whatever you need. God's got that. You know? And, and if you doubt it. Then that, that means that it's time for you to revisit that thought in a real way. Really really be with that thought because it has a power that is a perceived power that's not a real power and it doesn't really need to be occupying your energy or your time okay and so knowing that I won't move until I know wow how many of you would just be staying at home <laughs> But, but that's an interesting thing to think about before you walk out the door to your house. You know, that's one reason to do spiritual practice because you don't want to be bringing no funk into anybody else's world, right? You don't want to be bringing some, you know, nonsense that you made up in your mind that has no truth in God. That has no resonance in love. That has no awareness of the, the goodness of God. Yes, I'm so grateful for that song. I, I always appreciate hearing it, and so I'm so grateful that we were presented with that today. Yes. Well, we've been talking all month about the spirit and the practice of co-creation. Mm -hmm. And we started out with, you know, we're, January month is the basics for us. We, we have this kind of a tacit agreement among all religious science ministers that we do the basics in January because you got to anchor it. And you know, and I was kind of like looking back at the footage from the previous weeks and I was like, well, dang, it seemed like I'm always saying the same thing over and over again. And then I realized somehow when I was reviewing the chapter for the umpteenth time, of how to use it that, well, you know, whenever you are with the book, The Science of Mind, which we call the textbook, mm -hmm. there's always another layer that can be revealed to you. But if you just skim it and say, yeah, 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 I know that, mm -hmm. then you kind of miss another opportunity to feel the presence of God, to really understand the presence of God, to really be able to grasp the presence of God in your heart and in your mind so that you truly are breathing the breath of God, that you're truly breathing in that love and giving it out. And, and, you know, 
the thing itself was on the first Sunday of the month and, and I was talking about that love only loves and that God is that which fulfills us. And the songs were, my God is awesome and we thirst for you. And, and we were really being in that vibration of God's glory being within us and radiating joy through all the qualities, love and joy and compassion and peace and freedom and prosperity and completeness. And we were really being with an awakening to our divine identity. And so that was a great time for us to really be able to kind of check in at the beginning of the year and to be in full possession of that awareness and to be anchored in love, unlimited by grace, as that is our theme for the year. And to really keep being with that and and what that means to be anchored in love. Really to know that as we're walking in the love of God, we are being held in the arms of God. God doesn't have physical arms and we keep trying to humanize and anthropomorphize God. And that's not necessary because God is so much greater than what we are. But, you know, grace is the cheerleader that keeps on rooting for you all the time. It never stops. Now, just think about it. What if God said, forget them? Oh, Lord. But that's never going to happen, so you don't even have to go there. But I mean, just knowing that that's what keeps us, if we forget, that's what keeps us supported. That's what keeps us feeling the presence, even when we think it's absent. And it's really that we checked out. So, you know, when that inner voice tells you, of a life wonderful in its scope, you know? It's not anything that you're going to see on the TV. It's not anything you're going to see on the internet. It's not anything you're going to hear at the, at the water cooler, okay? But the thing is, there is a love beyond our fondest dreams, and that is the love of God. So we were talking about that on the first week and asking how much good are you willing to receive and and... Yes, I asked that question, which sent you for a loop. Is the womb of your mind friendly to the presence of God? And and, and after I had to break it down so that you would understand what I was saying, are you receptive to God? Like, people can shower you with whatever, but unless you say, yes, I will receive it, then you don't get to enjoy it, right? You don't get to have the benefit of that presence and that love and we also did the Jerusalem stone that day and wrote down a divine quality that we wanted to anchor for 2019 so I'm inviting you to continue to be with that divine quality throughout your year and to know that there is um, an opportunity for you to embrace it there's nothing that God needs to do that's extra All you need to do is to remember that this is what I said. I'm willing to be and I'm willing to have and I'm willing to know. Okay. Mine was compassion. It's always compassion. It's always compassion. I bought a book the previous before last time I went to um, the Buddhist temple. I was at the Buddhist temple last Sunday. Um, And and the the previous time I was there, I, I got Pema Shradron's book on compassion. It's like, it's, it's, it's a lesson that I can never stop learning enough, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, when I think that, you know, it's about something you didn't do or something I didn't do, then I get to have an opportunity to be in an understanding place. I get to be in a, a place that is unconditional love. And, you know, when I committed to that, when I walked into Agape and said, this is my community, to say that unconditional love is what we were about, it's a tall order. And it doesn't necessarily happen naturally. And when it does, it doesn't always stick around because we find excuses for, you know, well, they did that to me, so I don't need to give them my love. And, you know, they don't deserve it based on this, that, or the other. And all of that is irrelevant, Really? Because the only thing that matters is that we get to offer our breath to life. Right? So, as we move forward into um, the way it works, and we realize that God works for us by working through us, 
and that we can reap a harvest of fulfilled desires and that we can know and accept the good and leave the concept of evil behind. Right? Because the law is going to follow the thought regardless of where your thought goes or where it came from, whether it came from truth or nonsense. The law is still going to follow the thought. And so we have work to do. We have work to do with ourselves. And just to make sure that we don't get caught up in our our own sense of smallness somehow, some way, when we come out of the grandiose, extensive presence of God, somehow when we do that, we've got to be able to tap into that expansive good so that we can be our brother's keeper, so that we can offer some of this love, some of this light to everyone with whom we come in contact with or even go out of our way to be in contact with people that we wouldn't normally be in contact with because, yes, they need attention. You know, I was telling my sister, Yemanja, this morning, you know, it had dawned on me after the fact that she wasn't playing hooky from church, that she was actually not feeling well. And, and, and that I needed to be a paying attention to that and I needed to be showing up for her. And I, you know, I, I get that I can't be at all places at all times, but, you know, just be grateful for the thought and follow the thought whenever you can, you know? As I was doing the memorial service for Gail Werblin on uh, Friday morning, there was, you know, me revealing that um, Gail and and her daughter Sasha had called me uh, a few minutes before midnight and I was asleep. And um, when I woke up, which was around three in the morning or so, um, I listened to the message and they were like, call sooner than later. I was like, I'm not calling anybody at three o'clock in the morning. And I'm, I'm going to wait until 8 o'clock. You can't call nobody before 8 o'clock. That's what my home training said. You can't call nobody before 8 o'clock. <laughs> but when I called at 8 o'clock, Sasha told me that Gail was already gone. So that's the kind of stuff that you, you, you know, that stays with you. And that's the kind of stuff that I know, like within the middle of the night, that that was probably her time to leave. Mm-hmm. Because people who have been in my congregation have a tendency to do that. They have a tendency to let me know when they leave in. So now, I don't care. You're going to wonder, if like, why is she calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Just because I have to. Because <laughs> I have learned that lesson. But you know what? We've got to free ourselves up. And, you know, we've got to set the church free to be who we are as East Bay, right? And so we get to do that individually and collectively, you know? So we've got to know that we're not captive. We're not captive by any situations or circumstances. You know, we have a faith that is high, Ernest Holmes says, as high as we will make our mark, right? And that that high mark will be where it's manifest, right? Not in the low mark. That's not going to produce anything, right? But yeah, my, my girl came last week, Candace. I, I think y'all had a good time with her, right? Yes, yeah, since she was my house guest, I put her to work at my house too, so that was cool. Friends can do that when you've been friends as long as we have. So she said, resolve, dissolve, evolve. Prosperity is your birthright, right? So, so be willing to let the lies be burned up through your transformation. Isn't that fun? Yes. Yeah, I'll tell you I, I, what I was doing while y'all were being with that. But, but I'm going to continue with what she was saying. Dissolve means to let go and to let it fade gradually or in an instant, yeah. right? Yes. It, it, there's no timing in God. It, it, people think that, well, you know, in God's time, what does that mean? You don't know what that means. There's a whole range of what that can mean. And when you negate the fact that God works instantaneously, then you are delaying your good. I'm just saying. So we get to participate in our life's unfoldment. And she was telling you that because we're made out of love, you know, the enemies are the thoughts that we have about our own insufficiency. So we don't have to keep having those kind of thoughts. We don't have to keep continuing to minimize ourselves and think that we don't deserve and think that, you know, we're not worthy. But she's invited us to take some steps after making a decision and, and, and excavate and clean and mine and transform. And, and prosperity can be right relationships, good health, or money. 
Yeah. There's, there's no end to how God reveals itself. But just being willing to demonstrate prosperity in your life. And I hope that, you know, those of you who attended the workshop got the benefit of that as well. There were only 18 of you. There should have been at least 81 of you. But um, you know what? Those 18 people, don't go to them asking them for money. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, God sends a plane, a train, a helicopter. And if you don't show up, you know, get on board at some point. Don't be talking about God didn't show up for me. And I'm going to continue to keep sending different people here to help y'all understand what it is that is, is really going on because, you know, there's a wonderful network that, that I have and that I'm blessed by, and, and I want you to be blessed by them too. Yes. So while y'all was over here doing that, I was up at the Buddhist temple and I was being with this, this class that was called Dukkha and the end of Dukkha, reactivity. Don't that sound juicy? I don't know what's Dukkha. Dukkha is suffering. Yes. Suffering and the end of suffering. And so, so, you know, we did a lot of meditation. We did walking meditation, sitting meditation and all of that. And, um, and so we were able to like be in our processes. And, and I came to realize that, you know, mm, I had this thought that I don't know who to trust, mm -hmm. that I don't know if I'm safe. And I was like, well, isn't that interesting? You know, those ideas, those thoughts about betrayal and dishonesty and all those particular things. Mm -hmm. And so as I was being with that further, I was being with a, an awareness that, of course, I'm safe. Of course, God is safety. And not just like doing that bypass thing, but really saying, whoa, what's really going on is that I need to spend a little bit more time doing my self-love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did that this week. I slept a lot this week. I, um, I ate a lot this week. My mother keeps asking me, how's that Fitbit working? Is it telling you you need to move? And I'm like, bye-bye now. But yes, it, it is working. But, but just to really be with that and say, okay, you know, and, and to let myself be willing to, to not only practice that in terms of, um, you know, doing those things that bring me joy and bring me comfort. It was also wonderful being with friends and, and seeing places where I've lived and where I went to school and seeing how things have changed. I hadn't been to L.A. since October of 2017. So, um, you know, if you're gone for more than six months, a whole bunch of stuff changes. But, you know, there's, there's something that has been, you know, speaking to me and saying, wow, you know, there's, there's an opportunity for a different level of growth here for, for you to really say, you know, when you're not feeling safe, perhaps you need to take care of yourself. And, and taking care of yourself means that you're responsible for your life. And this is what this teaching is about. You know, nobody else is to blame for anything that happens in your life. Say to yeah. your neighbor, yeah. say to your neighbor, no one else is to blame for anything in your life. <laughs> Isn't it so convenient to have someone else to, you know, yes, they're pro it's their fault. But it's not very spiritually mature, is it? It's a little infantile. I mean, you think about the kids. Well, he did it. Who did it? Oh, no. Right? Right? Nobody wants to fess up their part in the, in the, in the situation. But, you know, I've, I've also been doing, you know, the course and, you know, uh, the Course says, I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. 
And attack thoughts aren't always something coming from somebody else. Attack thoughts are basically what I am projecting out there. And so when I start to say, well, I am under attack, it, it's not that simple that you hear yourself saying that, but it's really this idea that gets to be fancied up and decorated and all of this. And so the Course tells us that every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. Breathe, breathe. Every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. Well, you know, I, I realized that, you know, when, when, um, when I had to just kind of like uh, get over Donald Trump, you know, and I was like, mm, what did I do to create that? You know, what, what, what part of me am I not liking that he gets to be responsible for, Right. And so that's an invitation for us because there's nothing that we can do about those other people. It's up to us to deal with us. It's up to us to work on what our thoughts are because our thoughts will continue to manifest regardless. And so, you know, I had to go then, I had to go deeper. I wanted to go deeper and I went into the actual text of the course and looked at the, the, the chapter on the separation and the atonement and, and really got to, to, to understand that when you see with attack thoughts, know that those are thoughts that are based in fear. Right? And, and you, you can still complain about fear, but nevertheless persist in making yourself fearful. You know? If fear is not something abstract, it's your own invention because it's not real. You may think that there's something other than love, but that is simply an illusion. So I want you to be with that. And that's not easy because everybody's been talking to you in the science of mind about, you know, perfect love casts out all fear. Well, it is still true. You know, in, in, in Christian Teachings, it says perfect love casts out all fear. Well, yeah, because when you are really in de- entrenched in love and, and dedicated to focusing on love and knowing that you walk in the love of God, you know, fear can't get in. You know, it's like, it's like sealed. So, you know, um, there's nobody else that can release you from that fear either. Okay. So, you know, if anybody tried to intervene between your thoughts and the results, then they would be interfering with the, the law of cause and effect. And then that would not really be fair for you to be able to learn how to be with your thoughts, right? So if someone thought that they were helping you, that they would actually be depreciating your power, okay? Because it would confuse you into knowing. So, you know, don't ask for help in that way. You know, if you're going to ask for prayer, ask for clarity. You know, really don't, don't ask someone else to carry your load when it's yours because that's the contract that you signed when you decided to come here to this plane. That's the agreement that you made in consciousness that your soul needed for its unfoldment. And so there's really nothing for anybody else to do but you, all right? And so when we're looking at that, we're saying, whoa, you know, miracle working entails a full realization of the power of thought in order to avoid miscreation. Because fear creates miscreation. Fear does miscreation. It doesn't create it. It is miscreation. And so understanding that there was another part of the course that says, I do not perceive my own best interests. I do not perceive my own best interest. So that's basically saying to you that whatever that we are thinking about, if it's not making us feel good, and I don't mean feel good like uh, looking around, no children, okay. (laughs) I don't mean feel good like that, right? I mean, if it's not making us feel good mentally and emotionally, then there's something that I am thinking that is not in my best interest, right? And so, for example, and I used this example when I was doing the the course on Saturday morning. You really need to tune into that. There's people that are really having some good uh, inspiration and some good insights. And so, 
This is from Gail's service. Isn't it pretty? So anyway, um, to say that I am not able to know what my own benefit is, I'm not getting the wording on that right, to say that I do not perceive my own best interest is to say, wow, uh, you know, the government shutdown is over. But I just hate that that had to happen. I'm just mad because all those people didn't get paid. I'm just upset because all that wasn't necessary. Blah, 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 blah. How is that making me feel? Pretty bad. Pretty lousy. Pretty upset. Pretty disturbed. Is that in my best interest? So what do I want to, what do I want to experience? I want these people to be made whole. I want them to be restored from the way they were or better. And I want everyone to be at peace. So that's the thoughts. And those are the thoughts that I can choose to have that are in my best interest. Because thinking about people being in peace makes me feel at peace. Right? Thinking about there being justice makes me feel that justice is alive. I know it is because God is. Right? And so really thinking about what thoughts come through the screen, what comes across your radar, what you're paying attention to. You can let stuff go by your screen. You don't have to engage in it. You know, you don't have to co-sign with that crazy thought that just went by. You know, you have the controls here. You know? And so, you know, when, when you are perceiving a situation in a certain way, it's going to determine what's happening in your life. So if you were to, for example, now just close your mind and search your mind for unresolved situations about which you are currently concerned, and then choose to uncover the outcome that you want. That you want. Not what you think is going to happen, but what you want. Okay? And so lock that in. Lock in that outcome that you want. So in the situation involving blank... I would like blank to happen and blank to happen, right? You know, in the situation involving painting the outside of this building, I would like that to happen with ease and grace and for little money as possible. Right? And so I don't get to go into, well, we got to find the money. We ain't got the money. Who going to give the money? Where the money going to come from? Well, we got all these bills, and we can't pay all these bills and do that. Never mind all of that. That is not in your best interest, right? So is God able or not? Let's say your neighbor, God is able. Because the Course says, either, either you believe that you are vulnerable or you believe that you are invulnerable. Now, we may not be aware of it, but many of us think that we are vulnerable. Many of us think that, you know, you know we're, we're, we're so delicate. Something might happen to us that would just shatter us. Well, yeah, if you keep thinking crazy thoughts. But when, you, when your mind is set on spirit, as the song says... Woke up this morning with my mind set on spirit. You know, how are you going to be vulnerable when you got a whole force field surrounding you of love, right? What can touch that, right? So, so whatever you think those distressing possibilities are, understand that that thought that it's a distressing possibility is an attack on yourself. Okay, so we, we don't we don't have to attack ourselves, you know, because then we, you know when we, we we think that you know we're, we're we're clever and we we somehow manipulate it so that we project it on the other people and say, look what he did to me, right? And it's not them. It's like where was that energy gonna go? It goes to the person who's right there, right? And it looks like it came from them, but it didn't. It came from you, right? So, you know, we're immersed in an infinite intelligence, you know. There was a 29-year-old baby who was left in a dumpster and at birth. 
I'm sorry, a tw- 29-year-old baby. <laughs> there was, that might have happened too, but... <laughs> Let me just tell you that there's a 29-year-old black man who was left in the dumpster at birth. He was found two days later by a family. He is, an, he is the owner of a $62 million telecommunications company, the only telecommunications company owned by a minority in these United States. Okay? So it, it doesn't matter how he started, right? He still has a computer that he fixed as a little boy that is working today. So, so we don't need to hear about what had happened, right? We, we, we need to know that we are immersed in a mind that knows all things and that we get to tap into that, right? And so understanding that, you know, we only know as much as we can prove by actual demonstration, you know, that's what it tells us in the chapter on how to use it, you know? So the theory of any given principle, it goes beyond its application at any given stage of the unfoldment of that principle and the evolution of its accomplishments. If that were not true, there would not be any progress in science whatsoever. Right? And so the world at large has not yet come to consider the principle of mental practice in the same light that it considers other principles, other sciences. Right? So, so that's how we stay in our doubt. That's how we stay in our disbelief. That's how we stay in, 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 in total concentration on effects and not realizing that we're the cause. And this isn't trying to make you feel guilty about what you cause. This is to make you aware of the power that you are. This is to make you aware of the power that your mind has. This is to make you aware that you are the causative activity of your life. You don't have to rely on somebody else giving you a job. You don't have to rely on somebody else giving you a meal. You don't have to rely on somebody else telling you you're beautiful. You don't have to rely on somebody else for anything because you are the cause and you get to set an intention to cast what you want to have in your life. So when I think about these thoughts I may have about, whoa, you know, I'm not safe or whatever, and I've got to remember that there's been a long pattern of me thinking that it may have started at some point in my childhood, it may have started at some point even in, in utero, I don't know. But these neural pathways have a groove in my mind. And I just, as long as I keep thinking, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, that will continue to show up in my experiences. But when I decide to meditate about it, when I decide to take that thought and say, you know, you don't have this kind of power over me, I get to flip this, I get to choose to think something else. And that, that thought no longer gets to be in that groove. I get to create a new groove, I get to create a new possibility for my life. Yes. And you know, it's been proven that by thinking correctly and by a conscious mental use of the law of mind that we can cause it to do definite things through us and for us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when we're dealing with real life, with thoughts, impulses, emotions, that's real life, by the way. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody want to tell you about Wall Street or anything else that's going on in the world. Real life are your thoughts and your impulses, okay? That's where everything is starting. So, we're dealing with causation. You're dealing with original cause, okay? So we're knowing that, wow, I get to choose. And so I get to learn how to control my thought processes. And I get to bring them into alignment with reality. And that's what a capital R. So I get to bring my thoughts in alignment with God. I get to know that I'm walking in the love of God, right? And, 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 and I worship God because God is good, is what we were singing, right? Yes, yes. So if, if God is good, why wouldn't I want to be in alignment with my good? Yes. I absolutely do. You know, you have to learn how to control your thought processes. I finally saw night school. 
Did y'all see that? It's been enough time, it's gone by, I could spoil the plot for you. If you haven't seen it, then it's your fault. (laughs) So homeboy could not get math. It was like stuff would pop off, right, off the page, off the chalkboard. It was like, whoa, he, you know, it was like, so, you know, he decided, you know, after he got embarrassed of somebody calling him stupid, he was just going to drop out of school until somewhere down the line he was going to need that GED because after a while his hustling just kind of wore out and that wasn't enough for him to keep going, not to get what he really wanted, which, of course, was the girl, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> girlfriend... She, she was dedicated, you know, she was nice and tender with the special ed little children. When it came to him, she had him in the ring, beating his thought process out of his head until he was able to say, okay, I processed that, okay. So once he knew that he had the potential to have processing his thoughts in a way that is allowing him to learn, all he needed was that template. And that template was enough for him to go ahead and study. And even though he didn't pass the GED test the first time, because he knew it was possible, he said, oh, I didn't pass it. I'm going to take it again. Second time. Oh, I didn't pass it. I'm going to take it again. Third time. Oh, I didn't pass it. I'm going to take it again. Fourth time. Oh, I didn't pass it. I'm going to take it again. Until finally, everybody's like... You know, everybody gave up on him, like, seriously, you know, like, dude, you just ain't getting it, right? He wasn't, he wasn't going to be deterred because he had already got a glimpse of what was possible, right? He had dyscalculia, I guess that's like dyslexia with math, and, and he had some kind of process issue, and he had about three different kind of learning disabilities, right? But he stood up there in his cap and gown, right? He got his. Because, you know, we should be able, Ernest Holmes says, to look at a discordant fact in the face and deny its reality. Since we know its seeming reality is borrowed from illusion, from chaos and old night. Well, our standard is one of perfection, yes? Yes. So keep practicing until it's natural again. Keep practicing until you know that your standard is one of perfection. Keep practicing if it looks like it's not possible for you to be what you want to be, what you are needed to be. Because you are needed to be something or else you would not have been incarnated on this plane. So when it says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, in Matthew 5.48, that doesn't mean, oh my God, I've got to be perfect. It's not about performance anxiety, okay? It's about capturing your truth, okay? It's about knowing that I can look at a wrong condition with the knowledge that I can change it, right? Or else, why even get up out the bed in the morning? There's got to be a reason that you said yes to life. So yes, you have the ability and you need to apply that knowledge, you know? So just like he did in night school, it's like, you know what? This condition is not real, it's not true, and I know I can do something better than this, so I'm going to do it. Some people say wrong conditions exist because someone experiences them. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in the school of heal my unbelief. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, you might, as Ernest Holmes says, uh, run into a friend who begins a tale of woe, mm-hmm. and you can listen to it without accepting the false position. I did that at a party a few weeks ago. People were talking like we were in the 1960s somewhere about the man this and the man that. I'm like... Is this really happening? And I'm like, uh, I'm not engaging in this conversation. But when I had a hook, when I had a hook to get in there, then everybody else kind of shut up and went, oh, yeah. Right? 
Because, I mean, truth is truth. And, you know, when you're, like, talking smack, it's, you know, it's just to, like, hear your lips smack up against each other. So. <laughs> but, you know, when people look at this at face value and say, you know, the experience must be in consciousness, you know, change the consciousness, you know, experiences are. You know, I have a colleague, probably more than one, but uh, I won't tell you all the details, but he said, and he said this several times, and I always have to address it. He's a minister, and he keeps saying, there was no racism back in the 60s. And I go, Bill, you know, Bill, no. <laughs> we're, we're not going there, Bill. And, 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 and talk, would talk about things that would happen in Chicago. No, that's not true. I was there. That, that's, that's not true. No, no, the, there was racism when Johnny Coleman was alive. That's why she started her own organization. Hello? Amen. So, so, so people get to, to look at what they want to look at. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, his position is it's only because they see it. Well, you know, we give our, ourselves permission to trust what we want to trust. And why not put our whole trust in the law of good? You know? Why not, why not know that what I speak into being is possible? You know? So finally, somebody was very compassionate with him. Everybody else was pretty much done with him. That, I, that was at least being verbal about it. And she said... You know, that's great that you haven't experienced that deep wound, you know. But it seems like there are a lot of us who are looking at these conditions, and it's undeniable to many of us, right? And so that's good because I'm sure he probably wanted to be heard, and maybe once we're heard, then we can allow ourselves to entertain a different possibility than the one that we've been operating at, especially when we notice we're getting all this backlash. It's like, whoa, what did I do? Maybe it's what you're thinking, right? Yes. Because a man convinced against his will is of the same conviction still, yes. right? Yes. So, you know, it was interesting, and I'm going to wrap up in a minute. You know, when I was at the temple last week, one of the teachers was saying, you know, somebody wanted her to teach pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. And I was like, well, I teach that. Yeah. You know? and it was, but, but it's okay because, you know, she was eventually allowing herself to open up to a new perspective. But when I was thinking about, you know, what it is that I see myself sometimes doing, like, I, I can have a mindful moment and then ignore it and just keep doing stupid, right? And so I brought that up, and then, you know, there was probably about 150, 175 people there. So the teacher said, yeah, how many of us do that? And like, everybody raised their hand, basically, who was in the room, right? So, so if, if you really want to demonstrate the supremacy of spiritual thought force over apparent material resistance, I invite you to treat, okay? And, and start with acknowledging yourself as a center in divine mind rather than a center. Somebody had problems with T's or something at, back there or N's or something back then. So, so know that you are being divinely guided into right action and know that your thoughts are stimulated by truth. And know that there's power in the word that you're speaking because it is truth. And know that right action alone is power. And that you are open to new ideas, to divine ideas. And let the ideas of spirit direct you. You know? Declare that you are happy and well and prosperous and filled with a perfect life. And then live in the spirit of truth and let the spirit of truth live in you. So I'm simply asking you to realize this truth and let this truth set you free. Amen. To trust the invisible. You know? So whatever the thoughts are that are trying to tell you something that you know that is not true, understand that prayer works. And so when you start looking for ways, you know, to feel sorry for yourself, you know, oh, Oh, I did it a lot in the last quarter of 2018. 
You know, think about what if God really is good, right? It was so interesting because, um, you know, there was someone who was trying to, you know, um, basically take me down and and represent me in a in a foul way and 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 you know one time i was around him and somebody came up and said oh reverend celeste i've always wanted to meet you and i was like yes right because how could i be such a horrible person if somebody wants to meet me and then somebody else who was saying some things about me you know one of my friends out of the blue called up and said, you know, I really want to go to Reverend Celeste Church in Oakland. Can I do that? Oh, no, 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 you can't do because this rule says this and this rule says that because they live in Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, good. Somebody else told them that I was valuable. And so when, when I don't even have to say anything and somebody else says it for me, that means that something I'm doing must be right. And so I'm asking you to trust the invisible. To trust the love of God. To trust grace. You don't even have to put your hands on it. All you got to do is say, yes, God, I receive. Yes, I walk in the love of God. Yes, God is good. Believe it, receive it. Namaste. Now, as Rebecca's bringing up that treatment box, I'm knowing that it's time for us to get centered in prayer. And as the practitioners and ministers join me by standing with me. Thank you. I was wondering if you were going to stand with me. (laughs) You know, when it comes to prayer, I ain't feeling no ways tired. For I know that the energy of God is my energy. That it is the true substance of which I was created in the first place. It has never been depleted and never will. It is the energy of love and peace, of joy, of wholeness, of perfection, of completeness. It is the energy of freedom. It is the energy of my essence, my substance, my allness. It is the presence of God in me, as me, and through me. And as I know it's true for me, I know it's true for everyone under the sound of my voice. I know that right here, right now, that it is the presence of God that we share, that we are one in it. And so I speak my word from this place, knowing that for anyone who has placed anything in the prayer box about feeling some kind of discouragement, some kind of despair, I am knowing that God is able to reveal to you that there is a peace that passes understanding, that there is a joy that is unheard of, that there is a love that is un conditional that is forever expanding and becoming more and there is no ever no loss or no scarcity of the presence of God so I'm knowing that even in those places where it it appears that the bank account is not showing up the way it, it needs to in order for you to do what you got to do just hold on and know that the presence of God is able instead of looking at those negative thoughts that says I'm not able, I can't, it's not going to happen, I give up that's not an option God is able. God never gives up. God is the source and the supply. And I'm knowing that the substance of God can come from any nook and cranny, any corner, whether you see it coming or not. And what I know is that the presence of God is the wholeness of the body temple, the wholeness of our thoughts, the wholeness and the perfection and the completeness of everything all of us each and every one of us so there is no spot where we can look and not see the presence of God and that includes in our own body temple that includes in our own health that there's a a greater idea that can dispel those lies that have been settling into our blood into our organs and our muscles and our tissues and our sinews they can be dismissed back into the nothingness from whence they came I call it forth now I know God is able and I know it is done 
And so in gratitude for the healing that's happening for all of our beloved ones who have been calling, for the healing of grief, for the healing of a medical condition, for the healing of a financial condition, for the healing of a relationship situation, I am knowing that there is a, a cause and that each of us are that cause and that we are willing to accept something that is for our benefit here today, right here, right now. And I know that God hears it. God says yes to it because God always says yes. So I know it is done. I release my word. I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Well, y'all got some of those millions you want to put in the box? Let's take this opportunity to give thanks for what we have been given. <laughs> We're knowing that there are no limitations when the source is involved. And the source is always involved. The source is unlimited. Its grace is constant. So I'm knowing that there's a great, grand, and glorious way that we are joyful givers. What, what, what was that uh, Reverend Anthony was saying last week? Hip, hip, hooray is, is offertory, right? I like that. I think we're going to have to make that part of the script. So as ushers come forward, let's enjoy the process. Something. Something, 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 something won't be this morning, uh, this morning, yeah it did, this morning, I'm mighty grateful y'all, something won't be here this morning, must have been. It must have been. It had to be. It had to be. I know it was. Know it was. The hands, the hands of the Lord. I want to say it again. Oh, we shot.
because God told me so. And so it is. Amen. We got children. Hey, hey. Amanda and Hannah and Leo and something woke you up this morning. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we had a wonderful time in youth church this morning and our topic was in stillness. So I'll have Amanda and Hannah lead us off. We talked about how to be still, some ways to express stillness. Leo will share with that. And Maria's going to surprise us. So we talked about stillness, so let us breathe in and breathe out. Now, what if you're in a relaxing bath, the candles and rocks, and everything relaxing and this is you with a nice round spiral. Yes, yes. Yay, Leo! <laughs> you wanna give us some love, Maria? <laughs> Mm. Hey, Maria, what you got to say? No pressure. I love my family, too. Thank y'all for being here today. My picture is about being still and, like, God gives you a message and you receive it. Yes. Um, my picture is me playing basketball. And when I, like, not play and sitting on the sidelines, I'm thinking... Of like what, like how to get the ball, and then when I'm playing, I focus on the person that has the ball, and then focus on the ball, and then try to get the ball. Mm -hmm. Focus. You done? You got something to say, Leo? No. Nope. Okay. Focus, focus, focus. Be still. Listen. Receive. Excellent. So let's bless the children and know hmm, each divine idea that is every one of them is perfect. That each of them are created on purpose for something magnificent. And I'm knowing that whether they see it now or whether they see it down the road that it's already been planted in their souls. And so we celebrate the goodness of God as it envelops them and cheers them on with its grace, with its unending love, its unconditional love, with its guidance and direction, with its supply and everything that the world has to offer is still not enough to compare with what God has for them. I give thanks for it all. I release this word and I let it be. And so it is. Amen. It reminded me, you know, I did a sound healing when I was down in uh, Los Angeles too. Y'all ever been to one of those? Sound therapy. 
Just lay on the floor and just receive it. It's good stuff. Let's stand and do the benediction. our new visitors in fellowship hall mother father god how wonderful it is to absolutely feel the presence here today to know that god is good and that we get to celebrate it not only on sunday but every day during the week and i'm knowing that we get to choose to make sure that we're walking in the love of god we get to choose to have those thoughts that are for our benefit. We get to choose to release those that may be stubborn enough and be in a groove of constant repetition of lack and limitation and no and all of that stuff. But there's always something available, something greater. And we get to cause it to come into being by simply saying, yes, I accept my good. We do so. We hold that in our hearts now as we leave. And we know that even during the potluck that God is good because we threw down and we brought whatever we brought. But but God is good even if there's nothing to eat for you here today. But we know there always is because God is able. In gratitude for all the blessings of this day, I lovingly release this word. I let it be. And together we say, and so it is. Hey, come on, guys. When I wake up in the morning, nice. Enjoy yourself. Come on. Come on, y'all. You have a lovely day. When I wake up in the morning, love. And the sunlight hurts my eyes And something without warning love Draws heavy on my mind Then I look at you, East Bay And the world's all right with me Hey, just one look at you And I know it's gonna be a lovely, lovely day. A lovely day. Yeah. I said, when I wake up in the morning, love, and the sunlight hurts my eyes. And something without warning love Draws heavy on my mind Whoa. Then I look at you and you And the world's all right with me Hey, yes, yeah, just one look at you And I know it's gonna be Hey, it's A lovely day 